Lord. Chapter 25, and it says, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Yes, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Then show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Psalms 25, 1 through 5. That's about the word of prayer, Mr. Gracious, and for this time. Right after all the songs, first of all, we thank you for truly. You have kept us one more day. Oh, yes, you have, Father. Father. You've given us one more day of life, Father. Yes. You've given us a reasonable portion of health and strength. You've yes. given us, yes. oh God. Oh God, shelter you, oh God. You've given us color, oh God. You've yes, given sir. us clothes to wear, food to eat, oh God. In the midst of God, the trials and tribulations, and the world goes through, God. Yes, Father, we, your people, you still continue to hold on, Father. We can still look to the hill from which comes out. Uh -huh. We can yes, still sir. call out to you, God. And you answer, yes, Father, yes. when your word said, in the day of trouble, we have to call upon you, oh God. Yes. And we thank you, God, that we can call upon you, God, that you never sleep, you never slumber, oh God, that when we call, you always answer, oh God. Father, when we answer, we ask that you forgive us, oh God. Please. But Father, we pray unto you and we pray repeatedly, and we have the notion that you have that answer, but you always answer, God. The problem is, God, you don't always answer the way that we thank you, yes, so, God. Man. You answer the way that you should, God. When you answer, you answer with truth and with justice, oh God. Jesus. And for that, we thank you. We pray that you anoint our ears, that we really attune our ears to you, that we hear when you speak, oh God. Yes, that we, you anoint our eyes, oh God, that we see, God, but you would help us to see that you will anoint our spirit, oh God, that we know the things of you, God. Yes, well, in times like it might be, the word says, Draw nigh unto me yes. as I draw nigh unto you oh, all. Yes. You are calling us your people to get closer and closer, Father. My desire is to get so close to you mm. that I disappear. Yes, that I be no longer seen. Oh, yes, that I heard. Jesus. That every time people Ooh. see me, they see the Christ that lives yes. within me. And that way, Father, I don't get puffed up. I don't get 
fall arrogant and run and think I've done anything for them because when they see me, I don't get any praise. I don't get any honor. I don't get any glory. You get all the glory. Yes, Dad. All the praise, you know, because you're worthy. Father, I continue to pray for this country right now. I continue yes. to pray for this world, Father. As it goes through, Father, 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 they say it's going to get worse. And we've had one of the worst days of death, pray, oh God, oh God, than anybody, oh God. Mm. Father, again, and in the middle of this, you are still God. Yes, you are, Daddy. And yes. you are calling for your people to not lose hope, yes. to not lose faith, mm -hmm. but to draw close to you, Father. This is a time, Father, when we're going through such darkness mm -hmm. that we need to learn how to draw closer. Mm -hmm. Father, you've given us time that we can get on our faith before you and cry out to you. Father, not only bless this world, bless this country. Turn things around. Forgive our sins. Yes, Daddy. And build the land. Yes, Daddy. Father, bless this city and this state. And surely, Father, continue to bless this place called First Star. Yes, Daddy. Father, as we continue to try to go on in the name of Jesus. Yes. Oh, we don't go on in the name of man. We no. go on in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, what we do, don't we don't do because of man. We do because you have mandated it because you have the land. Yes, Father. So, Father, bless what we do. Let your name be lifted on that. Be glorified. Be your glory, God. I pray for this congregation of believers. Yes. I continue to pray for your couple. Couple of your blood questions. I continue, Father, to pray for your protection. Yeah. Protect us from hurt, harm, and damage. Keep sickness and disease away. Please. Keep it all at bay. Yes. Father, we give it all to you and we count it on. Bless what we do here this evening, O oh God. Guide my tongue, guide my thoughts. Yes. Sir. Touch our hearts, O oh God. Let your word land on full of ground. Yes. You speak what you will. And we'll always give you the glory. We yes. honor your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pray that everybody is well this spring like, summer like uh, afternoon and evening in April. You know, it, it, it was amazing how God keeps reminding us that He's God. He <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, you know, got out today and thank the birds for singing and, 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 and folks who walk around in shorts. And short shorts and flip flops and paint tops and <laughs> stuff like that. And God, God, I'm going to show you how he does. A couple of Monday, they said, I ain't going to get out of this one. Mercy. <laughs> That's just God doing what God does. Whatever he wants to do. We continue to honor God. We thank God for all that he's doing. Hallelujah for And I pray for those of you that God is still holding you. The God that you, that you have not lost your faith. Mm -hmm. That your trust is still in an Almighty God. Yes. Uh, God will see us through. Yeah, guess what? Believe it or not, uh, even though you hear a lot of the dire news, they're still mighty than the tunnel. Oh, yes. Amen. There's light at the end of the tunnel. And like the Bible continues to say, this too will pass. Yes. Before we move on, is there any, any prayer request, uh, anything that I need to know about uh, from those here or those that are online? If you let Brother uh, John know if you got anything, uh, uh, he can relay it uh, to me. Anything. As on Sunday, we continue to lift up for Brother Herman Brees. Uh, we continue to lift him up. We continue to lift uh, uh, my wife's mom up for yes. prayer. Brother about this. Pastor, I, I, I just want to, um, you know, thank God for another day. Um, he woke uh, woke me up this morning, um, and I just thank God that he did that. Um, that is, um, right now, that's, my, you know, my prayer for my, myself and, and everyone that, that I know. Um, uh, that God would continue to to um, hide hide us under His uh, His wing and protect us, um, and that um, there is light at the tunnel, um, and 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 I trust and and believe in Him. So 
uh, that's that's you know what I ha have to say for today. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Just listen, just just a quick note. Listen to the news today. I remember when this thing started. You know, uh, this pandemic started started to spread. You know, and I think I heard somebody say, you know, uh, uh, it's funny. It really ain't touching a lot of people. Now they're saying the black people are dying in disproportionate uh, numbers. Pastor, I'm sorry. I had muted everyone, so there may be some others that would like to um, to. Uh, uh, that's, yeah. that's what I asked. They need to chime in. Okay, they are. I had muted everyone, but um, so yeah, I was. Go ahead. I was trying to get in there. Okay. Sister McGraw. Sister McGraw. Hi, Kate. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Go ahead, Sister, uh, this is McGraw. Sister McGraw. Hi, y'all. I uh, just wanted to let you know um, that we're everybody's in my household is doing real well. Amen. And, um. I like for you all to pray for my family back in Alabama, um, the Franklin family. My cousin Lynn Franklin passed away Friday from the virus. Mm. Oh, and, mm. and she was 55. And my brother, Frederick Robertson, he's in the hospital still with his legs, but they're going to take him out of the hospital and he's in a nursing home. So. Um, no one can go visit him when they get in there. So that's real, real scary to us. But I just know that God is in control and he has it. And that's what I wanted to tell you guys. Sorry. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Is this the Moses? It's Deacon Moses. How you doing? Deacon Pastor? Moses. Amen. <laughs> Say, how you doing, Pastor? Good. Doing well. Prayer, you know, for my neighbor just was walking by, and his mother is in a nursing home back east that's has the virus, and he can't go see us. So, name Shirley, just to keep her lifted up in prayer. And I also got two friends in DC, a couple we went to see, Brother Avery and his wife, and he took her in. She wasn't feeling well, and she has the virus. They kept her, and he went home. He has it also, but not to the other stage. So I want to keep them lifted up in prayer. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? If there's no one else, I'm going to go ahead and mute us again so Pastor can move forward with the Bible study. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Again, thank you all for, for, for signing in for some stuff with the spirit. Uh, told me that I needed to talk to you about. We're going to kind of get just, we're going to get a little bit back on track this evening uh, on Timothy. Uh, we actually ended up last week, we ended up talking about some stuff in certain Timothy, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do beat, 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 we're going to back up. Uh, <laughs> That there was some stuff that, that God showed me and God, God and the Spirit revealed to me. Uh, we're going to back all the way up uh, because we really not, did not properly hold out uh, First Timothy in the sixth chapter. We probably did not quite properly hold out First Timothy uh, and the sixth chapter. So there's a couple of things, nuggets that are up in there that we are going to pull out uh, uh, out of that. Uh, and some of it actually ties in with some of the stuff that's going on in the day. What we, when we are uh, Actually departed from First Timothy in the sixth chapter. One of the things that we were actually talking about, uh, Paul's letter to Timothy, uh, he was telling him uh, 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 about what's really important in life, is, and 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 what we are learning, uh, believe it or not, and I think I alluded to it on Sunday was uh, that uh, in times like this, God is showing us what's really important in life. You know. Uh, uh, like I said, Sunday, the football games, the basketball games, you know, and I know a lot of us are mad because uh, we should be in, uh, get rearing up for the NBA championship. Uh, 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 God is telling us that that is not really important. Uh, he said, not important, you know. Some of us are thinking forward to the beginning of the football season, the draft is coming up, and some folks are excited, and, and God may say it's not going to be a football season. 
And I hope that don't mess up some of you guys' years. Uh, uh, regardless of showing us in time like that, what's really important? But, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, and like I said, son, we get a chance now to spend more time with family right. than we've ever spent before. That's right. Uh, 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 for some of us, that's a good thing. Uh, for some of us, you know, some of us are in trouble. Uh, 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 because I believe before we come out of this, the boys' lawyers are going to be uh, 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 on speed dial. Uh, but, but there's a lesson to be learned in there because the Bible says we need to learn how to live peaceably with all. Does it not say that? And we can't live peaceably with folks now. How are you going to live peaceably? Well, folks in the church. Uh, God is God is so God is so much plus important. He's given us an opportunity to grow closer, like I said, Sunday for the children. Uh, a lot of you that, that, that have, 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 have charges. Now you got to teach them. Uh, 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 and, and not only do you teach them, it's an opportunity for you to learn also. So you have to spend that intimate time with your children. So my thing is, God knows exactly what He's doing. But in Paul's closing out First Timothy, the letter to Timothy, uh, uh, what we ended up last time, you know, he was telling Timothy two important uh, 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 things that we need to have in our life. He said, first of all, we need to have godliness in our life. He said, godliness. He said, not only just godliness, you know, a lot of people live godly life. You know? uh, some of us got halos, some of us got wings in our clothing. Um, uh, but he said, it's not just enough to live a godly life. He said godliness has to be compared with contentment. Come on, and this is first yes, Timothy, sir. the sixth chapter and verse six. He said you have to pair godliness with contentment. It's one thing to be godly, but there are so many people that are trying to live a godly life, but they are discontent. Uh, 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 they, 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 they are not content, you know, and, 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 and when you're not content, it brings about an anxiousness in your spirit. And the Bible said, be anxious for nothing. Am I not for you Bible scholars? Am I not right? The Bible said, be anxious for nothing. And 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 and, and, and he said, Paul, or he said, Timothy, you have to pair godliness with contentment. And if you learn these two principles and apply them in your life, he said it will afford you great gain. That's what he said. And he said the reason that we need God in this and earth, the reason we need to be content is, he said, because in the very next verse, what does he say? He said, for we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. So my thing is, for, uh, we need to be content with what God has us, with what God has given us. Uh, that does not mean that we don't continue to strive for excellence. But we have to learn to be content with what God has. But quit pulling God's arm every morning and asking Him for this and that. Learn to be thankful for what God has already given you and for what God already has you. Godliness will contentment. He said, again, we don't we didn't bring nothing in this world. So and we can't take anything out. So this is what happened. All the stuff that we are accumulating in life, uh uh, uh, uh your great portfolio, your house full of John, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some of y'all get mad but I'm telling you how it's done. But, but before it's all over, it will turn. It'll end up, it, it'll end up at the flea market or the dog market. <laughs> but, but, but he said, he, 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 he said, so all the stuff that we spent a lifetime accumulating, why? We can't take it no more with us. Right. I want to, I want to, when I, I want, whatever I accumulate in life, I want to be able to take it with me. And that's why Jesus was taught on the mount, on the side of the mountain. He, 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 he said, he said, you need to learn to store your treasures where? In heaven. He said, because if you store your soul, treasures in heaven, when you leave here, they'll be there waiting uh, for you. Yes, sir. Uh, you won't leave it for somebody else to spend, to ruin, to, to mess over. Hallelujah. But what we need to learn is uh, don't worry about accumulating a lot of stuff. Uh, because what happens is 
and, and you learn, and some of you, uh, Dick and Moses, I know you've experienced that, that it causes dissension in family. Yes. You know, when you got a lot of, the more you got, the more hell it got that goes in a family when you pass away. That's right. Uh, uh, they're going to fight over it. They're going to fall out over it. You know, uh, 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 and, and I, I'm determined, uh, 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 my brother and sister, not to do that. I ain't leaving nobody nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm going to leave a cable bill and a credit card bill. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm leaving, and they can fight over that if they want to. Uh, but but he said, he said in the very next verse, verse eight, uh, six and eight, he said, learn to be, he said, if you got some food to eat and some clothes to wear, what does he say? He said, be content. Be content. And I made some notes on that, you know, uh, it, 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 if I can find them. I said, I said, just cold and food. And the question is, is that all needed to sustain us? Max said, no. What else do you need, Max? No. If you got a can of sardines, a pack of soda crackers. Love. Love. Yes. What about that love? Yes, Max. Yes. yes. <laughs> and the reason I said that, uh, uh, and the reason the Bible said that, he, he said, food and raiment. If you go to Joshua, folks, and you don't have to read that, but in Joshua 24 and 13, uh, 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 God tell when they're getting ready to move across the, the, the Jordan River into the promised land, God said, This is what I'm going to buy for you. He said, You're going to keep from vineyards. That you did not plant That's right. and live in houses yes, that you did not build. And you go back and read it, and I'm paraphrasing, but that's what God tells them. He, 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 and, and, and this is the land, he didn't say you're going to give me anything else there. That, that's what he said. Okay. Food and raiment, if you got something to eat and clothes to wear, be content. Be thankful yes, for that. That's good. Then the very next verse, he began to talk about you rich people. All right. Careful. And I want to dwell there for uh, just a moment. Uh, I want to talk about uh, you rich people. Now, all of you guys are rich, <laughs> I, I would assume. But he says in the very next verse, he says, but he puts a but there. He said, he talks about being content every night. Mm -hmm. He talked about two things that you need in your life. He talked about godliness and contentment. But then he puts a but in there. He said, but they that will be rich. Now, you need to know what he's talking about here. He's not talking about folk that are already rich. He didn't say, now, he, he didn't say that they that are rich did. This is where the pitfall comes in. He said, they that will be rich. And what I wrote here, if I can actually find my, 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 my extra note, uh, uh, what he's saying here, uh, those folks that ain't got it but want to be rich. This is who he's talking about. He said, these are the folks he's talking about. Those that lust after it, those that that's the only thing they can think about all day long. Uh, 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 these are the folk that try to get rich by any means necessary. And I think we call them today, I think we call them fruits. Uh, 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 you need to understand that crooks come in all shapes, forms, and colors. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 you, if you read the news today, they got blue collar crooks, they got white collar crooks. They got no collar crooks. Uh, 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 and what they are doing is they are trying to get something for nothing. Right, right. And we live in a society today that is so bad that folks want something for nothing. Right. They want it so bad that they are breaking your house yeah. while you're in your house sure. instead of going to work. You know, uh, 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 uh. and this is not to talk about everybody. But we have, we've grown into a society where at every turn you see, there's somebody on the side of the road with a sign. And they have become very 
very ingenious and poetic, you know. I told you about the man that had his hands there. I bet you can't get through with a fork. You know, I, 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 I don't know how much money he got. Uh, 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 but this is what a lot of people have discovered because there are some people that have followed some of these folks uh, 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 that have stand there all day and get up uh, 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 at the end of their shift, go get in their Cadillac or their Mercedes, and go to the house living on the hill, trying to get something or nothing. Paul, Paul writes uh, unto Timothy and gives him a warning about rich folk. Uh, those that would be rich, those that the only kind they can think of. You know, we got folks now talking about, uh, I'll be glad when my ship comes in. You ever heard people that do that? Uh, and people are so desperate for their ship to come in, we've turned a lot of Powerball and, and, and Mega Million into a billion dollar industry. Look at it, because people want something for them. These are people that they will be rich. I don't know if you guys remember, but a year or so ago, I think the Powerball or the, maybe one of them got to about one and a half billion dollars. Folks were spending whole paychecks trying to buy a chance at getting rich. And look at, uh, somebody wrote that Lotto, Powerball, and Megaball is nothing but exploitation of the poor. Who buys most of the tickets? Poor folk. Folk like me that really can't afford it. Well, I'll take my light bill and put it on the chance that I become a millionaire. Have anybody ever looked at the odds of winning? They are astronomical. Somebody say, you stand a better chance of winning and you struck by lightning twice than winning one of these. And I watched it. Uh, nobody that I know that ever won. They don't let people that you know win. <laughs> I think it's a scheme. But Paul said, they that will be rich. And the Bible is very explicit about rich and folk that don't want to be rich. I went through and I just want to give you some scriptures. You can write them down and read them at your leisure about what the Bible says about rich. Are you ready? First of all, Matthew 6 and 33. Matthew 6 and 33, for those of you who don't remember, talks about, but seek you first the kingdom of heaven and all of these right, all of this righteousness and you say the stuff that you really need will be added unto you that's right. and that's why I, 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 I say all of this other stuff if you do what's right first God will give you the rest of the stuff you need and if you don't believe me you can always call Solomon for a witness God gave Solomon a blind check in his eyes that's right. God went to Solomon and he said Solomon it, this is God speaking. The God of the universe, the God of all the creation, the one that stepped out of nothing and spoke and everything came. He said, Solomon, here's a blank check. Ask what you want, and I'll give it to you. What did Solomon do? Solomon, I'm uh, glad he didn't ask me. <laughs> I'll be driving my Bentley, two or three of them. Uh, but Solomon was what? Solomon said, Lord, don't I, I want to go in and come out right and do these your people. In other words, I want to be right in your sight, and I want to be right in the people's sight. A, a, a humble, he made a humble request, mm -hmm. and God said, hmm, mm -hmm. because you asked for that, he said, I'm going to give you that, and all the stuff you did ask for. So what we did, so the, 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 the lesson in that is, learn how to ask what's after God's heart, and everything else, he'll give you stuff you don't even ask for. That's a good word. Yeah, yeah. If, if you ask a call, because the Bible said, he, he said, you ask, but you ask a miss. In other words, you ask out of my will and out of my heart. Ask what's in God's heart and quit asking for the stuff that stuff that, 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 that's not in his plan and all the other stuff. He'll give you the Cadillac. He'll give you the Mercedes. He'll give you the big house. He'll give you the promotion. He'll give you the big job because he knows that you ask for something that other folks would not ask. So, Matthew 6 and 33. The next one is Hebrew 13 and 5. And it talks about keeping your, how to keep your life free. 
And you need to understand, there's the reason uh, why God will make a lot of us rich. And believe it or not, in this day and time, uh, uh, there's a big push for prosperity gospel. Everybody is preaching and teaching that God wants you to be rich. And there's nowhere in the Bible that the Bible says that God wants you to be rich. And if you can find it, please find it for and I'll, I, 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 I'll recant. But there's nowhere. He said, I'll supply you every need. He didn't talk about your greed, did he? But it says, keep your life free. Uh, and you can read the rest of that. Uh, and it goes on to talk about money and so wealth. It goes on to talk about wealth. But guess what? Wealthy people don't sleep at night. Wealthy people don't sleep well at night unless they take some good drugs. They don't sleep because most of the time they're worried about the more you got, the more you got to worry about how to keep it. Because the more you got, somebody's going to always try to take it from you. Mark 10 and 25. A very essential scripture about rich. This is the Bible says that Jesus said it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter in heaven. Is that not what the word says? It, are you agree with that? And, and a lot of people, like, first of all, I don't want you to misinterpret any scripture. Uh, don't misinterpret that. When God talks about camel and he talks about how he's not talking about your sewing needle. Exactly. He's not talking, you know, because some folks say, uh, 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 that, that, that should almost in public. A camel to an owl, he's not talking about your sewing needle. Most places in Roman days, the interest parts ways were called needles. Yes, sir. And this is what he was talking about. And that there were narrow entryways, and it's not easy for a camel, that is not impossible. But it's not easy for a camel to get through. Uh, Luke 16, 30, 13 through 31 talks about the rich man in Lazarus. Mm -hmm. And you've heard that story. The rich man had everything, Lazarus had nothing. And guess what? The great equalizer always, the great <laughs> equalizer will always come in. Yes, sir. I don't care how much you got. Yes, sir. I don't care how many people you know. I don't care how much your political position. Or how much little power you have, God has a great equalizer in life, and that great equalizer is called death. That's right. Everybody has to die, whether you want to or not. Uh, and I've heard, and what God has proven in this time of what's going the darkness in the land, guess what? Uh, death is not a discriminator, uh, it, it not a respected person. Death does not kill. What your address is, it don't care if you are a, 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 a great sports person, it don't care if you're an entertainer, death is not in the Death will knock on your door. And what we just what I told you last night, when they bury you, they're not gonna ask, they don't have I have not been to a cemetery that had VIP lots. <laughs> I have. This is for the rich of being, this is for the poor. So the other one is. Proverbs 30 and 30, 10 and 32, where it said, talks about the blessings of the Lord. Proverbs 13 and 22 talks about a sinner's wealth. Uh, Deuteronomy 8 and 18 talks about God gives power to get, God is the one that gives you the power to get the wealth. Luke 16 and 11, uh, uh, when you trust, uh, with, who will entrust you with true riches? And what Luke and uh, 16 left on God will entrust you with true riches. And we need to discover what true riches are. Mm -hmm. True riches had nothing to do with dollars and cents. It had nothing to do with portfolio and bank account. We need to learn who the true rich people of the world of the world of the world are. Most of the people that are truly rich in the world may not have a dime in their pack. Pocket, but has the spirit of the Lord all over them. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, the, the, those are truly rich for uh, a people of work. And if you look at the disciples of, of Jesus, uh, they didn't have a lot. Most, they didn't have anything. You know, they went through cornfield, plucking corn and eating, but they had true riches because they had a relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, 
He says, first of all, they that will, those that lust after not those that are red, those that love after those that spend all their time, these are the folks that will be with those that work 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And I've known some people that do that. Yes. 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And my thing is, if you work 12 hours a day and seven days a week trying to get riches, when do you have time to enjoy? Mercy. When do you have? You are working and yourself to the bone so that somebody else may enjoy your rich. So he says some things. First of all, this is what's going to happen to those that would be rich. First of all, he says in uh, uh, verse 9, he says, but they that will be rich, first of all, he says, if you are lusting after riches and you are, and all you can think about is becoming rich or wealthy, uh, 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 about more and more, he said, first of all, you will fall. He said, they that will be rich, uh, uh, he said, uh, 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 they will fall. These are the people that, uh, I was listening to something on TV, uh, I got a partner have a thing where she reads nighttime stories uh, to children now. And last night she wasn't reading to me, I just saw her keep it. Uh, she was reading a story about the little engine that could. And, and, and a lot of people, when we when we start thinking about the money, this is what we do. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And we keep working ourselves, working ourselves, working ourselves to death, trying to achieve something that's impossible. You know what I discovered? Years, years, years back in the old days, they used to talk about the American dream. You remember that? Uh, and this is about, everybody wants to achieve the American dreams. And what I discovered is the American dream is that for that now. Because this is what I discovered about those that will be rich and those that, that think they can and, and they are trying to work in their the book. As soon as you get to the place that you think you're wealthy, they move the box. Once you think, once you think that you become that you are wealthy, then they raise the bar and say, "No, you're not wealthy. You still got more to go." They keep moving the bar, so you will never achieve what you're trying to get. So he said, "Those that are trying," he said, first of all, they will fall into a trap and into a vicious cycle because when you're always trying to get, it becomes a vicious cycle. It be you're like a rat uh, in a cage on what even another thing they call one of the hamster. You like a hamster. If you ever watched a hamster on a wheel, uh, uh, and and this is how people laugh at me. I I I, I love to go to the gym and I, I miss it and I know it. And if you're looking at me on on the camera, I know it. They tell they say the camera had about ten pounds. So, uh, <laughs> but I, I love to go to the gym. And and, 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 and and even in my old age, I like to run. I, even though I don't do it well, my pace is so, I love to run. But people make fun because I ain't gonna run on no track. I ain't in too many rocks and pitfalls. I run on the treadmill. And folks say, and folks say, Harry, you run three miles and you're still in the same place. <laughs> you made no progress. You sweat, your heart is pumping hard. You put it on this label, yet you ain't going nowhere. And guess what they do for those of you that like to get on treadmills? They try to fool us now. They got these video screens yeah, yeah, yeah. of trails. You know, you get on there and you run it, and you think you're going somewhere. But but you, I'm running in, in the trail, and I'm seeing all these people, the same people standing next to me that was. <laughs> but it becomes a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are running on a hamster wheel. We're running real fast, but we're making no progress. And Haggai bears that out. You know, you remember, you remember what the prophet Haggai said. Haggai said, we're doing all this stuff. He said, he, he said, he said, we, we're doing all this stuff. He said, we 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 we, we put on clothes and we ain't warm. And, and the last part of all that, he said, we, we we get all this money and we put it in the pocket that have holes in it. And that's what I've discovered about trying to accumulate wealth. The more you get, the more it takes. I remember years ago, uh, uh, as, as a young E5 in, in, in the Army, it was back in the 70s, uh, 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 my base pay was $600 a month. 
That was the baby state, you know, they gave me the but, but it didn't add up too much back then, did it? Uh, and that, and I wasn't by myself, I had a family. Uh, you go to the, you, you go to the, you go to the commissary, well, baby, we got $80 to spend for, for a month's growth. Oh, mercy. <laughs> and what you do, I don't know if any of you uh, have ever been, you get to the register, and they start asking you, tell them, tell them, put this back. But those were the good old days. Those were the good old days. Yeah. Those, those, those. But, 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 me and my wife and my family, we survived. Yes. Yeah, we, we survived. There were days that we got to the end of the month when nothing in February, but long in it. But we still, you know, we, 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 we were still survived. Uh, 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 none of us starved to death. And now, 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 I, I make a whole lot more than six hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And it's, and the more I make, the more it takes to live. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I don't go to the grocery store and, and say we got eighty dollars to spend. I just don't go to the grocery store. <laughs> 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 I let my wife do that. <laughs> what did he say? First of all, he said, but they that that will be rich, first of all, they fall. They fall into uh, uh they fall into a trap and a vicious cycle. You need to know that all of this is an illusion of wealth that can never be attained. Because some of us want to be Bill Gates rich. You'll never get there. Mm -hmm. Some of us want to be awful went for the rich. You'll never get there. Mm -hmm. And there's something about I read an article about Gail King and she was uh, you know, she got a few dollars. Uh, she was say she said she's single and in times like this, uh uh it bothered her because she's all by herself. There's some things uh that money cannot buy you. Yes. Yes. The next thing he said, not only would they fall into temptation and to a, a snare, but it says, they that will be rich, they will fall. He said, into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful love. He said, when you will be rich, in other words, you're lusting after, you're thinking that. He said, you have a tendency to become foolish. You have a tendency to become foolish. Mom and them used to say, a fool in his mind will what? Soon part. Those that will be rich and, 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 and you don't have a rich mentality. This is what happens to our sports field. You take a young man that lived in the ghetto That's right. all his life. Uh, 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 had to steal bow gum and candy and stuff like that. Uh, 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 and he learned to be a sport. And all of a sudden, you giving him millions and millions and millions of dollars, and they become foolish. I, I read an article about the young man that's in Washington, uh, the Washington Redskins, Dwayne Haskins, uh, 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 a young man uh, come out of Ohio State after a year. Uh, quarterback uh, with his first paycheck, he bought seventy-two thousand dollars worth of jewelry. Jeez. Before you buy a pot to pee in, you buy, you know, <laughs> you buy seventy-two thousand dollars worth of jewelry. Why? What's that again? Flashy. I can buy you cubic zirconium and be flashy. And guess what? Most of you wouldn't know the difference. But he says, not only do they fall, he said they become foolish. And what happens is, uh, 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 if you're going to be rich, first thing you need to do is go take some financial counseling classes. Yes, good. You need to know how to handle your finances. Uh, 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 because one thing you don't do is give a fool money. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's <laughs> I was growing up as a young man from Georgia. 
my dad would never give me money. He would always make me earn it. He said, because he knew I was a fool. He said, he won't pay no foolish stuff. You need to earn your own. But not only do they fall, not only do they become foolish, but Paul writes unto Timothy, and he said, and after they uh, fall into foolishness and hurt and hurt for lust, he said the next thing they do is drown. They fall, they become foolish, and once you do that, then you begin to drown. The more you make, the more it takes. And if you look at the horror story coming out of the Major League Baseball, the NBA, uh, and, and, and NFL, these guys have made enough, enough money to last them a lifetime. But you will be surprised at the amount of these people that are broke. Yeah. 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 Bankrupt. Yeah. They gave you ten million dollars to sit on the bench, and you broke. Drowning in debt. And all I was about entertainment. Look at folks like him. To wear old because they were foolish, because they would be rich and did not have a rich attitude, they became broke. Why does Paul teach Timothy these things? Paul teaches Timothy these things to get a point across because he says in the very next verse, in verse 10, he said, For the Love of money is the root of, here's a song, all evil. Folks seek power over other folk simply because of the love of money. And the love of money will cause you to do stuff that God always found wrong. And this is what I have my problem is. Uh, because if we look at our churches today, especially the black, I can talk about the black church. The love of money has called people that call themselves servants of the most high God that claim to be preaching his gospel that claimed to walk in his will to hear from him to prostitute his word. Preacher, what do you want to prostitute his word? Anytime I preach or I teach or I'm trying to give you something of God for gain, it's called prostitution. Isn't that? Yes. I'm God's word cannot and should not ever be prostituted. Evil. These are people of God. That evil has touched their life simply because of the love of man. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? It goes all the way back to what Paul told Timothy. You can love it, you can get it, but you can't take it with you. What kind of person would I be to prostitute God's word, to fleece God's people for something that I can't take with me? And guess what? If I could take it with me, the place they're going, they can't spend it. <laughs> the devil don't take credit cards or cash. See? Mm -hmm. They only take Bitcoin. <laughs> the love of money is the root of all evil. If you look at a lot of murders that go on in the country, folks are murdering folks for what? For money. For money or what you got. Yes. Folks kill one another because of money. Rich folks, husband and wife decide to divorce. One of them thinks it's easier to kill the other 
than to split their fortune. He Paul tell Timothy, be careful of money. Yes, it is a tool and a great tool. And guess what? In this day and time of society, you can't get away with it. You can't get by without money. Everybody needs money. But God, what God, what Paul is telling you, he said, don't fall in love with money. And a lot of us, we are so in love with a dollar bill. That we prostitute his gospel and we cheat God. We cheat God. We cheat God because it all belongs to God. That's right. And God say, look, I just ask you just out of an act of obedience to see are you going to be good steward? Give me back 10%. And guess what? We love money so much that we hold on. No, if I give you 10%, that's 10% less than I have. But I tell you over and over again, and I say this even now, God will get his money. Come on, preacher. God will get his, he will get his just due. If he asks you for 10% and you won't give it to him, he knows how to take it. And like I told you before, he'll get it through your doctor. He'll get it through your lawyer. He'll get it through your mama. He'll get it through your mechanic. He'll get it. One way or another. I'd rather give it to God than to give it to the government any day. Some of us are so in love with money that when our beloved covenant and our beloved government say, we're going to send y'all a check for $1,200. Some of y'all jumped up and thought the sound come out. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Let me warn you. It ain't free money. <laughs> they tell you it's free. <laughs> but before it's all over with, they ain't going to get their money back. Hallelujah. But he said, the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after them, they have erred. From the faith. This is what the love of money do. Mm. It calls you to err from the faith. Mm. How many people you know that money keeps them from church? It does. Oh, yeah. It does. Oh, yeah. That's why God has not allowed me to become rich. He, he ain't said, Harry, you going to win the Powerball or the lottery? Because uh, uh, he, he probably know that as soon as I, if I win on Saturday and come to church on Sunday, and he knows a lot of us that, you know, we, 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 we are heir from the faith. And, and we'll start doing foolish things. He said, because of that, they heir from the faith and they pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Hmm. If any of you ever become rich, you're going to be sorrowful. Because you're going to have relatives that you didn't know you had. <laughs> Come knocking on your door. Come on, what's happening, cuz? Uh, uh, uh. And what happens is it becomes a sorrowful life and a lonely life when you do stuff like that and you and you start to uh, to love money. And this is one thing I found out about money. Money, and some of you may disagree with me, it's okay. Money can't keep you warm on cold night. Money can't talk to you when you're lonely. I know some of you say, well, I'm so sure going to rent somebody that'll talk to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it's not the same as renting somebody and have someone that truly kills. Money can't buy friendship. Even though some of us try to buy friendship. Money can't buy true friends, you know, because if you buy friends, what happens when the money runs out? People will go about their business. We need to close. This is what Paul tells Timothy in verse 11. Has he killed them all? He said, but that, old man of God, mm -hmm. he said, flee. 
from these things. In other words, what he's telling, he's telling Timothy, he said, run, get away from, don't hang around these things or these folks. And my thing is, you need to be careful with the company you keep. You know, if you hang out with folks that love money, they will convince you to love money yes. also. Absolutely. And it will cause your destruction. Paul simply tells Timothy, he said, you need to flee from these things. And this is what you need to follow when I'm done. He said, instead of loving money, instead of following money, if you got your godliness and you got your contentment, he said, this is what you need to take your godliness and your contentment. These are the things you need to follow. He said, follow righteousness. Yes. Righteousness is no more than right standing with God. Righteousness has nothing to do with being right. It has to do with a right standing with God. That is what I, and that will that, 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 that will be God on good terms. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what we should see, uh, uh, there was a man, with, I believe his name was Enoch. The Bible said Enoch yes, was a friend of God. Yes, sir. Enoch was such a friend that, that, that God said, he ain't gonna die. God said, God, God, God took him. Yes, he said, come on, you're gonna be with me. That's, I, I, and following up the way I write that, that's the kind of friend of God. I want to be the when, when, when the wrong, wrong way I get you. Yes, sir. God will say, no, but you can't have it. He's mine, I'm gonna take it. He said, but follow after righteousness, follow godliness, mm -hmm. living according to God's will, and living in God's way. Follow faith, because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Follow love, and that's one another. How can you love God and hate your brother? When you've never seen God and you see your brother every day. Follow patience. In other words, learn to wait upon the things of God. And God will always see you through. You need to understand, waiting on patience will always bring about trial and tribulation. For trial and tribulation, I learned Bill's character. And follow meekness. And you need to know that meekness had nothing to do with being weak. And that's why a lot of people, I can't be meek because people will take advantage of me. Hallelujah, because I'm, I'm being, had nothing to be worth doing with. Some of the most mightiest people in the Bible were meek people. Yes, sir. Jesus was meek. He was so meek that he allowed them to nail him to a cross. But guess what? Because of his meekness, on Sunday morning, he rose again. Yes. With all power. I'm done. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? You can pose a question if there are any questions. You just have to practice. You got to get it. I can't hear you. Somebody's talking. Somebody's talking. I didn't hear you. Michelle. Michelle Williams. Michelle yeah. Williams. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Did you have something for Pastor? Were you asking a question? No, I wasn't. Okay. Mm. Are there any questions or comments? That's what I picked up today. Oh. Did I stop for a word of prayer? Mm -hmm. Most gracious and eternal God, I follow you. Thank you, Father. We thank you for this time. Ah. Come on. Come on. Hide them in our heart. That we walk according to your will and your way, Father. That, Father, we, O oh God, walk, O oh God, in godliness and contentment, O oh God. And we follow after the things that Paul told young Timothy to follow after. Righteousness, yes. godliness, patience, and love, and meekness. That we follow after those things that we may be a better people. That in this trying time, that we can be a light and that we can be a example unto the world. Father, I continue to pray for this house of prayer called Grace Star. I continue to pray for this congregation of believers, Lord, that you continue to bless, that you continue to hold us, that you continue to keep us and to see us through, Father. And I pray even now, Father, for the day, Father, when this is all over, when you allow us to gather in your house one more time, Father, for the time 
what a time, what a time. We look forward to that day, oh God. But until then, Father, we continue to lean and to trust in you. Father, we honor you and we bless your name. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you.